Hi, I'm Peter Brusso for 101 Marketing Podcast, and I have a co-host with me today, uh, Richard Bentley. Say hello, Rich. Or Dick, excuse me. Hey, Peter. How are you today? I get our names right here. That's always good. And we have a guest uh, with us, Denise Sawyer, for social media or from socialmediame2.com. Good day there, Denise. How are you? Fine, Peter. How are you doing today? Uh, better than some, not as good as most these days, but I'm, I'm doing okay. We're going to do all right. So this is the first time that we've actually done a Skype video call uh, for a podcast, so we'll see how this all works out. Let's see. There's another thing I want to do here is do that. Okay, good. Uh, so um, in, in, in our podcast, Dick and I always try to ferret out the – good, the bad, and the uglies uh, of, of our, our guests, and we're going to stay on the good side completely. Social media is a really hot thing these days, and you probably were are a bit uh, a cut um, ahead of the bleeding edge here. Uh, a lot of people don't understand what it does and what it can do, and, and so uh, I'll start out here, Dick, uh, about uh, Denise. Tell us the the importance of social media, what it plays with a company today. Well, um, basically, social media is a way for companies to interact with their customers. It is a social venue, and that's the way it needs to be looked at initially, but it's also a way for a company to advertise um, their products or their brand um, through social media. But most of the social media posting, about 80% of it should be more leaning towards the social aspect versus the advertising aspect. Um, only 20% should be uh, geared towards advertising because most people who are on these social <clears throat> channels don't want to be barraged with advertisements, even though they're, they're starting to get that more on Facebook now. If, if you've been looking at your Facebook ads that are on the right-hand side, all those sponsored ads, uh, a lot of people don't know that they can eliminate those if they wanted to. They have a very faint arrow on the side there uh, for people to, to uh, choose to delete it if they want to do that. Um, and, and they ask the reasons for it. But, but places like Facebook, even though you may not be necessarily clicking on an advertisement, they will uh, find keywords from your posts that you make. So you may be talking to one of your friends and talking about going on a diet and how you lost 10 pounds. And then the next thing you know, you start getting all these sponsored ads about dieting and, and uh, health and things like that. So Facebook is, is carefully following certain keywords and targeting those people so that those sponsored ads can go to those specific people. Or persons. Well, I, I recently lost uh, over 10 pounds, so if Facebook's listening, uh, I need new clothes. I don't need to learn how to weight, <laughs> lose more weight. I need new clothes. So now, Dick, I know that you, you've you recently started. Uh, Dick is an independent associate for Legal Shield, and I've helped Dick uh, get his website up and going, or actually teach him. He did it himself, and you started using social media as well, Dick. Um, have you found... How, Dick, how are you using social media? Well, I uh, uh, come at this from a novice point of view. Uh, you know, my my uh, involvement with social media was just every once in a while clicking on it and see what my daughter's posting or something of that nature. Uh, and when I met Peter and uh, he helped me develop my website, I also met Denise. And uh, uh, I'm trying to come at it from uh, the point of view of... Uh, of, of subtle this you know I, I in in some of the things that Denise has told me and all that the Facebook and some of these especially Facebook they don't like the in your face advertisement so I've been trying to do a, a more subtle advertisement uh, and actually I've done very little advertisement of of uh, my home based business uh, on there I've done more inf inf informative about uh, identity theft and things of that nature uh, so uh, you know, people make people aware of, of of the need for identity theft, which is one of the products that I uh, have uh, to market. So I'm I'm really at the early stages. I've done I do Twitter and LinkedIn, and I do a blog. And uh, you know I, you know I'm not sure yet. Uh, you know it's only been maybe three or four weeks I've been doing it. So I think it's too early to 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 you know make a, uh, a conclusion as far as how successful it's been. But uh, 
I know what Denise says, uh, give me a lot of tips on it. So. Um, Denise, and I also do, you, do Google, Google Plus. Uh, Denise, do, uh, why don't you give us a little bit of chapter and verse about, you know, do um, if there were 12 social media channels available to me, do I do I use all 12 of those? Do people, should they embrace all all the social media they can possibly get? Or what, what's your thoughts there? Well, I, I think, excuse me, <clears throat> initially, um, I would sit down with a particular client and learn about their business, ask them some specific questions, because Twitter may not necessarily be something that certain businesses would benefit from, whereas another business would. Um, I had a client that I was working with that was a restaurant, per se, um, and we did, you know, uh, Twitter, we did Facebook, um, Google Plus, we did Pinterest, um, and we also did Blogger. So those are kind of the, the top social media channels right now. Um, you know, if you're a photographer, you might want to look at Instagram as, as a choice and maybe stumble upon because um, people have certain interests that they can choose on those channels. And if they can see your work on there, then you're, you're, you're more... Um, exposed, you know, for the particular targeted audience that you might be wanting to get connected with. Um, I wouldn't say to have a lot of channels to start off with. First of all, most people don't have that kind of time because uh, having a social media channel requires a lot of commitment um, and regular postings because your audience out there, first of all, wants to know that you're committed in getting to know them. Uh, that you can offer some kind of value to them um, and Dick what you're doing and in, in terms of blogging and you know d uh, talking to people about senior scams and things like that that's a beneficial thing to your targeted audience and the more that they see you putting up these blogs in fact they say it takes about 75 blogs for you to really capture about 70 70 percent of the audience they know that you're committed to doing that and they're looking forward to seeing what your next blog is going to be about. Um, so people need to see that you're committed to that and then of course that you're available to uh, engage with them on these social media channels. One of the biggest mistakes a lot of businesses make right now is that they'll they'll have a social media channel and maybe occasionally they'll put up a picture or something and then a customer will will put a response in there and it will just go totally unnoticed or they don't respond to it at all well who wants to to connect with a business that doesn't respond to their customers mm -hmm. I, I don't think any of us do so it, it's really important um, they say that Within the first five hours of a post, say, Dick, you posted something on Facebook about your blog and you got a comment, you need to be available those first five hours and checking your Facebook, you know, unless you get notices on your phone, which you, know, you should probably um, do that, uh, connect your Facebook to a text message or something like that so that you're alerted if you're out in the field somewhere, that you need to respond to your customers hopefully within the first hour of their post because that lets them know hey there's somebody live on the other end I'm working with a human being this person is committed to responding back to their customers and I'm talking about both positive and negative feedback negative feedback especially um, on places like Yelp for example with a restaurant um, you know you're gonna get a lot of fictitious bad stuff on there but there are some legitimate ones as well uh, people will generally put a bad experience up on something like a social channel before saying something good about somebody. And that really hurts um, your brand or your product if you don't respond because you have all eyes looking at you and want to see how, how are they going to respond to this. And typically, I, I you know, counsel people to respond in a very professional and, and up uplifting kind of way, positive way, 
uh, to try and correct the problem and, and let everyone see that that's what you're trying to do. I would be more apt to go with a restaurant, even though maybe they're half and half on good and bad reviews, that says something of a positive, you know, on a positive tone that we, we're very sorry you had this experience. Um, you know, we strive very hard to give our customers the best experience possible. Please come back and, you know, your meal will be on us or something along those lines. If I'm looking, you know, for a restaurant and I see that kind of a response, I might say, you know, I'm going to give this guy a chance or this, this, this restaurant a chance and go try it for myself. Whereas no response speaks volumes to people. Hmm. Did he, so I have a question uh, along that line. Uh, you, you, you kind of answered it. Thus far, I, I haven't received any negative feedback on my uh, blogs or postings. I've got, you know, I get comments from people. They, they like it or good, good posts or whatever. Are you saying I should respond to those comments with yes. a thank you or yes. acknowledgement? Yes. Okay, I haven't been doing that. Yeah, so. they, they want, when people post a comment, they want a response. You know, it's okay. kind of like uh, you give a gift to somebody. In the old days, people wrote thank you notes. You know, that's kind of gone right. by the wayside. Um, people, it's a social channel. That means they want the interaction with you. So if they put something on there, positive or negative, you should say, you know, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You know, please keep the comments coming. I, I would love your feedback so that anyone that's reading that knows that you're available to uh, engage with them, and that's what they're looking for. I, oh, I, great. I, I have not been doing that. That's a good tip. Thank you. I think it's just like a conversation. If somebody's sitting across the table from you and they say, great post, and you just sit there and say nothing, mm -hmm. crickets, 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 you know. It's right. common sense to say, oh, thank you very much, you know, keep those coming. So I mm -hmm. think if you think about what you've always stressed, Denise, is that um, social media is like a conversation. And, right. and you need to approach it that way, just like that person sitting across the table from you. And uh, that's good counsel. Now, it's also been said that, you know, let's let's do some comparison contrasts. Um, I mean, you've been helping me with one of my sites. And, um, you know, Facebook is more like a family where you might post once, maybe twice a day, not much more than that. And, and right. Twitter is kind of like the newsroom and... And Pinterest is more of a visual thing, and Instagram is something different. Can you just do a little comparison contrast or take us through the the, the myriad of, of possible solutions for us and tell us a little bit about the, the channel, how it has its own culture, its own, its own way of speaking a little bit? Educate us. Sure. Um, let's start with Facebook because that's probably one of the more popular ones. And, um it's becoming more popular with the older um, generation. In fact, you know, more people have gotten on Facebook in the age range of, you know, 55 to 65. And the reason for that is, you know, a lot of them have their, their children and their grandchildren and they want to see the photographs and they want to keep up with them. And, and um, you know, that's become uh, less and less younger people. They've gone to other things like Snapchat and WhatsApp or WhatsApp and, and th those kinds of, of things uh, because they can't, they, the, the older people kind of have taken over and are, are having fun with, you know, Facebook and, and interacting in that way. So it, one thing that Facebook has done is that they've taken away kind of like what Google has done to the websites. Um, they're requiring businesses to... Uh, to get more exposure to have to pay for an ad. So Facebook ads are now becoming a real popular thing. And I don't think it, I, I don't know if any of you, have, either of you have noticed, but if you look at your Facebook page, you're going to see a lot more ads and, and they're going to continue to keep coming because people are, are now having to, if they want to get that exposure to their targeted audience, they're going to have to uh, pay for ads. But you can get Facebook ads for as low as $5 a day and maybe do a campaign for three days and see how that goes and see if you get clicks and, and traffic to your website. So um, I would say Facebook is, is interactive, but in order to reach out to the business side of things, you're going to have to uh, pay for it on Facebook. Um, now, Facebook compared to something like Google+, which uh, they're saying is the up-and-coming 
new Facebook, but with a lot more features. I think uh, Google Plus is, is more geared towards businesses. Um, it has things like um, the Google Hangout, which is kind of like Skype, what we're on. Um, and you can have up to, I think, 100 people on a webinar on Google Plus, and you can advertise that through Google. Um, you can set up an event, uh, which if they have a Google Gmail account, which they're going to need to have, then that'll, that'll post to their calendars, and they'll get a notification via their email account that this, this event is coming up and be prepared and, you know, alerts and things like that. Um, so I, that's something Facebook does not have. So for hmm. a business, um, I think that that's a real nice feature to have. Um, and you can, uh, on Google+, Plus, you can car uh, compartmentalize your, your circle of either clients or your staff or whatever. So you can have a circle called and call the group a staff group and set up a webinar specifically to them and your event will only go out to that circle. Or if you um, say, for instance, you know, want to do something with the defenders and you want to specifically do something uh, with a martial arts group, um, then, you know, the people that are in your circle that are martial arts, you can put them in a circle by themselves as a group and then send out your, your, um, request to do a, a webinar on a specific topic relating to martial arts. So these are things that you cannot do on Facebook that you can do on Google. So I think that's why Google is probably going to be more and more effective down the road, especially with the fact that having fresh content and having it go back to Google searches is going to be important to, to use uh, Google Plus even more. Um, do you Go know ahead. do you know whether you can record that hangout at all? Do you know that? I think you can because there is a camera like uh, there is on on Skype. Um, I think you can record those. Yes, because in fact, uh, I did attend a webinar and the recording was sent to me via email. Okay, because you know we're using screen capture software right now. Skype doesn't have a an ability to do a video recording. Their third-party uh, um, software that was out there that you could do uh, audio but not video, and then they disallowed that. So it's a, we're skirting the issue by a screen capture software, um, all the hurdles that I have to go through to do that. So uh, that's interesting. Now, let's, uh, Dick, do you have a question before I go to the next one? Well, did you want me to tell well, you about I the guess... other? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I got lost in the park there, didn't I? Yes, I apologize. <laughs> we only got their Facebook <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. Go ahead. Uh, that's okay. Um, things like Twitter and Instagram are, are more um, like, hey, a news flash, this is what's going on with me right now. Here's a picture. Um, you want to always have a picture on Twitter cause that's, or a video clip or, or something uh, because most people are, are more apt to look at a picture or a video than, than reading something, believe it or not. Most people are at work. Um, most people are, are looking at their uh, social media channels at least five times a day on average, the active users. And a lot of them are doing it during their work hours. Um, you know, so that they only have a little clip of time before, you know, their boss may be watching them or whatever. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're looking at uh, these. And most active times are between 12 and 3 p.m believe it or not, and usually um, Monday through Thursday and, and Saturday sometimes. It just depends, but that's the, the things that I've been reading about. But Twitter, um, if, you, you know, if you were a photographer and you, you had a photo shoot and you had a really nice uh, picture that you wanted to share immediately with everyone, then you would put that up and, uh, and say, hey, look at my new picture, and, you know, those Which I just did on Instagram. Going to see it, and if they really like it, and you know, they might respond to you. Which I just okay. did on Instagram, <laughs> right there. Just picture of us doing a podcast together there, okay. Dick and Denise. How cool yeah, is that? So you know, Peter can put that you know up on mm -hmm. Instagram, and and um, he has it connected to his Facebook, I believe, so it'll show up on his Facebook as well. So you know, people like 
to see those behind the scene things that are going on and 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 you know if you, if you want to capture the moment right then and there let's say you're you know uh, you see a house fire well you see all these things on the news media for example I mean people are capturing things that are happening in live time like you know police beating up somebody that they shouldn't have been be beating up up or you know and here's a picture and you know the next thing you know it's on the news and um, so those those are why those types of, of social media channels are, are good because it's capturing the moment right then and there in live time um, Pinterest is like a scrapbook um, most of the Pinterest users or active users are women about 80 percent um, and uh, they want to see, you know, what's out there. Mostly food is a, a popular thing and jewelry, I think, is another one. But businesses are, are getting in on, on uh, Pinterest and posting their products and brands and, and have found some success in getting a lot of leads through Pinterest. Um, I set uh, Peter's up and he has quite a few boards um, that have different things on them and uh, one of the things they say is that you need to put the price of your product if you're putting a product up there you need to put the price of the product up there because people are interested in seeing that there you're going to generate more leads if you put a price than if you don't put a price um, so you got to try different things you can put video up on Pinterest a lot of people didn't know that um, we have specific boards set up for Peter, for example, that have, um, you know, videos that he's done uh, on YouTube, and it will just, they just click the link and there they go, you know, but we still advertise if you want to get your Defender today, you know, for, you know, as little as fourteen ninety five, what's that worth to save your life, that kind of thing, so... Pinterest is something that not all businesses need to get on board with, but if you have a specific product, um, probably so, because it's, it's, it's very product-oriented, but it also has some other things, too. That There's a lot of martial arts things on there. I was doing a lot of search, and, and they have an interest thing that you can click on. Um, so if you want to follow a specific interest, um, that's what you would do to maybe draw in more people to look at your specific product or brand. Denise, uh, I have a question on, on Pinterest that uh, just came to mind as you're going over it. Uh, you know, in my as in my home business uh, uh, as an independent social legal shield, we offer uh, a membership uh, to uh, uh, an individual to join for you know less than a dollar a day, where they get access to law firms and all. And we also mm -hmm. I, uh, another part of the business is is trying to uh, sign people up to be associates. Is is that something that you would be advertised on printers? Is that something if I put up you know, is that geared or not? Um, I, I think you could, Dick. Um, I, I think you could. Uh, well, of course, I, I don't know what kind of restrictions you have with Legal Shield. If you could, you could put their. Um, uh, logo on Pinterest that was something that you would need to clear with them first but yeah. you could put right. something like you know um, you know for as little as a dollar you know membership fee um, you can get the following um, you know things done for you uh, you know from a legal standpoint and you know contact me for more information that's something that you could probably put up there but you want to you know have a picture uh, you know, if, yeah. you, if you want to promote Legal Shield and have them use you, I don't know if, if you know you can do that. Certainly, that's something I would check out with your business because a lot of these corporations, large corporations, have restrictions, um, and you need to clear that first through them before using social channels because some of them are just limiting people to Facebook only uh, to use their you know company logo or whatever um, the case may right. be. But I think there's a way we could right. work around that. Um, you know, and and still get the traffic to you. Right. Uh, are, are are there limits? Character limits like there are on uh, Twitter? No. 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 Okay. I actually, right, well, I'll check with them because because my thinking is five hundred five hundred characters. Actually, there is a okay. five hundred character limit. Yes. Because right. my thinking is, uh, uh, if if they allow me to do it with the with the logo. Uh, I could take some snapshots off my web page and put on there, uh, you know, uh, to advertise 
either start your own business at home or become a member. We have a small business package. There's a lot of different things they do, but I'll, I'll check them to see what they're on it. Yeah, yeah. So, check with them, Dick, and then we can talk. The... You know, and I can and show you how to do it. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. Right. Um, but one thing about face or Pinterest that you want to do is is continually put fresh content. It's really important on all your social channels that you're doing that um, on a consistent basis, so that people see that you're serious about your commitment right. to providing them with information. Um, right. And you know they look forward to seeing that, and you know in some cases, interacting. The one thing that you would want to do is is in, put something on there that would want them to have it repinned. And repinning is kind of like, <coughs> excuse me, on Facebook where people share something that you post. It's kind of the same yeah. concept on right. Pinterest. They'll okay. repin it on their on their you know their board. So that their friends right. and and family, that's what you that's that's what you gear to that you you want to do that um, and have people repin. That's the idea, so you can get more more exposure out there to your audience. And you say and uh, link a video to it also. Yes, you can link videos. You can link your blogs. Yeah. So you would yeah. um, it's like I said, it's like a scrapbook. So you would create a board yeah. that says you know. Uh, informational blogs about legal matters or something like that and then you could post right. each of your blogs as a pin on there and then you would uh, you can connect it to your website you would put your website address so they can click that link and go back to your website right. and get more information okay. so that um, but sometimes right. with video well I'll have to it's something I would have to show you yeah. but uh, okay when you post video that link automatically uploads there so you would have to put the web address in the body of your description about what okay. the video is about on those okay. particular well, places. Okay, well let me check and see what the restrictions are but I want to talk about stuff that concerns just me but uh, I interesting. No, it, the interesting part of that is that we can put up our podcast on Pinterest. When you think of Pinterest yes. being kind of a visual medium, social media, where you'd see pictures. And the demographics are, are more women than men up there. And uh, But Denise, I think, can put up podcasts too, right? Yes, I have actually on your Pinterest account. I've, I put a picture of a microphone with headphones, um, and, um, and I put his first blog up there about the Defenders. Wow. So, wow. Uh, but it's connected to YouTube. So, but if you were to go on that particular board, you would just click on that that picture, and it would come up, and you could just hit play. There's a there's a little button there to play, and it automatically starts playing the video of the podcast. So, yeah, Great. that's a, that's definitely something, uh, Dick, yeah. that you might want to do. You know, for your um, your your Pinterest account, if if you're able to open one up. Yeah. Well, okay. uh, 101 we'll Marketing that, uh, Podcast ought to have its own channel up there, too, here shortly. Yes, that's, that's, yeah. that's correct. So, and, then, yeah. and you yeah. can use this particular podcast up on your social media, Pinterest account, yeah. I would imagine. Yes, yep. okay. And you know, Dick, uh, you're going to be joining me more and more on these 101MarketingPodcast.com uh, podcasts. And, you know, I, I think one of the things you said last night when we were talking on the phone all these startup businesses, startup, whether they're tech businesses or even Denise's business, you know, Legal Shield has an, uh, an awesome capability to save a boatload of money uh, by utilizing a Legal Shield uh, subscription to, to, you know, get your, your business stuff taken care of while you still don't have any money. It's less expensive than a full time attorney for sure. And one of the things that should be talked about up on a podcast somewhere is the, the benefit of of what Legal Shield can bring a small business too, but uh, I digress. Sorry. Yeah, Dick. we we have a yeah yeah. I think for another uh, video, I uh, we have a broad offering of small business and uh, group benefit uh, programs that would really would help a a startup a business with you know that has uh, you know 
was down to to you know actually a self we have a program for self employed that just operate out of the house even so but we we could talk about that later but you know peter we when we talked last night one of the things we talked about is 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 interviewing some of the small business people and i think as part of that we should give them and if denise is prepared the opportunity to kind of talk about their business, how it started, what the goals are, and that type of thing. So I think you know the people watching this will get a feel for, for what their business is about. All right. So there you go, Denise. Your question is, how did you start your business and why? <laughs> and where, where did you come up with the name? Uh, <laughs> Which I think is a clever name, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Um, well, um, if I tell the truth... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on how this came about. I, I've been in the mortgage business for 31 years. Um, and I've uh, been in the professional business for a long time and, and uh, um, was let go, uh, which was the first in 31 years, and um, was scrambling to find a way to, um, you know, earn money. And so um, I came about uh, with consultation with Peter T to uh, come up with an idea of how I can do that. And social media, you hear about it every day in the news, um, and you know that there's a lot of businesses that are, are doing it. So I started doing some research um, in my free time to uh, learn more about social media and, and what it can do for businesses. And I was very uh, intrigued by the idea and started learning more and uh, applying it. I, I got my first account with a restaurant and uh, I think, you know, it made a difference. Uh, you know, there's some trial and error with social media w with anybody. Uh, you got to see what works and what doesn't work. And, and um, lately uh, in, in doing the research, I've, I've found that, um, you know, the newest trend for 2014 is, is for businesses to do more behind the scenes type of um, content uh, posting. A uh, lot more video, a lot more pictures. It doesn't have to necessarily be professional. Most small businesses can't afford to pay, you know, a, a professional photographer for every single thing that they're doing behind the scenes. But this is why we have cell phones. And these cell phones take really good pictures and videos. And so... Um, people are really interested. When I started po posting some things on this particular restaurant site uh, behind the scenes, I did an interview with a, a chef um, and uh, took some pictures of, of the staff and things like that, you know, or, and um, the people got, uh, there was a lot, a lot of good response. In fact, one person uh, posted something negative on there. It was before, I, I don't know where I was. I wasn't in a position to respond quickly. Um, but before I could respond, two of the other people that have been following their restaurant um, went after this person with their negative comment and said we, that they completely disagree with that comment. And um, they think that this was a great restaurant and they will, you know, it just means more, more for them to bring their friends and family there if this woman doesn't go and so uh, that was that was really rewarding to see that because that meant that you know what I've been posting and what I was engaging with with them uh, on behalf of the restaurant was working um, that you know you don't see people saying something negative in, in a business um, and then then their customers or loyal fans going back and and uh, actually you know commenting before you get a chance to you know in your favor so that was that was kind of a neat thing so um, it it's social media is an ongoing uh, ch ever-changing thing and it's it's not I don't think businesses need to expect that they're going to have an overnight success by using social media it takes a long time to develop and the reason for that is that your your customers and people that are currently following you want to see that commitment and uh, of posting on a regular basis of of giving them and offering them valuable information, they need some value out of what you're you're giving them, and you know once they get that trust factor going, then they're more likely to want to share your things and and um, you know and and possibly purchase if they you know if they if they don't purchase right away, that doesn't mean they're not going to. You just got to keep keep going, and and it's it's going to take some time, um, just like anything else on the web. And now, go ahead, Dick. Be your, your 
you kind of broke up, yeah. so I didn't hear what you Try said. Try that again, Dick. Uh, I was just wondering who, 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 who would be your ideal customer that you would be looking for for your, your business? Good. That's a good question. Um, I, I think anyone that is not currently um, active in social media posting, any business right now needs to get on on board the train because this is the trend of the future. It, it's, it's already revealing itself. The larger companies like McDonald's, uh, Ford, uh, Amtrak, you know, all of these big companies, sports, uh, sports uh, teams are using social media. Um, they've, they've had a lot of uh, positive uh, feedback from it and negative feedback, but they, they hire people that do what I do specifically in a group to manage their social media accounts. I don't know if you've heard in the news there's been a few uh, mishaps with uh, people that were hired to do the social media where they had to go back and do an apology uh, to, you know, to the, the general public about what was posted because they weren't um, controlling it as much as maybe they should. I mean, you've got to run a business and, you know, if, if you have time to do all these postings, and it is time consuming, um, to do it and to provide fresh content requires you getting new pictures on it, you know, and posting new pictures on a daily basis. It requires some videos, so you got to get somebody with a video camera out there to do that. Uh, you know, people don't have the money or the time to do that, and that's some things that, that I do, um, you know, to help businesses. But I think all businesses, even if, even if you do it yourself like you're doing, Dick, uh, you know, it's a start, and once you start getting busier and you get more customer base coming in, you're going to find you're not going to have time to keep that up, but it's really important, and I can't emphasize this enough, that you've got to keep posting on a regular basis on the social media channels that you have so that people see your commitment to interact with them because it is a social channel, and that's, you know, what businesses need to keep in mind, it, you know, they they want that interaction with you. Um, one, one, one. Um, uh, Ford, for example, did a campaign, I think, on Facebook, where they uh, let people interact with the CEO of Ford for 30 minutes or an hour or something like that, and they got such a huge response. Like people couldn't believe that they were actually interacting with the CEO of Ford. How often does somebody get an opportunity mm. to do that? Yeah. People thought that that was really cool, you know. And and um, even if you're a small business and you're the CEO, you know, most people can't even get to you. Um, I think, as Peter would say, they can't get past the secretary, you know, to to even right. talk to them. So, um, you know, what an opportunity to to. to interact with your customers and, and people think that's pretty neat to, that the, the big guy is talking to them and taking the time out. It means a lot to your, your right. customers and your potential customers out there. I had right. that on a uh, podcast just this morning talking with one of the my self-defense weapon instructors. He couldn't believe he was talking to me and people call to ask questions and I answer the phone. They can't believe that. So uh, in a little miniature way, I can understand how that works. And I've always been a big believer, I've been podcasting forever, and behind the scenes podcasts just have a, a real charm to them. And I think you discovered that very yeah. quickly on that, boy, you know, I mean, stuff like this is valuable. Boy, when you can go behind the scenes of stuff like this, that's even that's even fun. That's right. a lot a lot funner. Now, oh. uh, Denise, are you going to have plans I, to ever uh, do a newsletter? Me, yes. Can no, you we, hear me? We got you back, Dick. Well, I, my computer just shut down. And huh. it's, uh, it's, I'm, re, I'm rebooting it all up again. So give me a few minutes and uh, uh, okay, I guess you, we can continue on the phone if you want. Well, sure, you can listen. Um, um, yeah. Are you calling me on your telephone? You you call. I'm, I'm on my cell phone right now because my computer is rebooting and it's slow. All right, well, we can keep going right like to, this. Yeah, we can keep going like right this. In the, right in the middle of everything, uh, the computer just went blank and, and locked up. It's, so I should be on in a couple of minutes, but go ahead and 
if you want to continue, I'll, I'll listen. And we were going to have a, I was suggesting to Denise that she write a book or a, an ebook on social media intro book. Like, you know, stuff we're talking about here, if we had a, a way to either sell or, or you know, give parts away of what small businesses need to do or understand about social media, um, that would be good. And do you ever plan to produce a newsletter, Denise? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I do, Peter. I will be getting around to doing that. Yes, I will. <laughs> I've been trying to get Denise to do a newsletter for about three months now, I think, yeah. at uh, least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's so apropos because so many people just don't understand uh, social media. Like uh, we have a unnamed individual in the 111 group that doesn't understand about opt-in emails. You know, and how important from my world, opt-in emails, you don't send anybody an email about your business that didn't opt into that. It's just rude. Right. It's, it's, it's unwelcome. It's hostile these days, and people don't understand yeah. it. They just start harvesting emails from every player that can, and that's not never the right answer. And No, it isn't. Yeah, if you want to send me stuff about us being friends and stuff like that, but don't try to sell me on a not opt in email. That's almost like a chalkboard and nails to me, you know? Right. So, um, right. Legal, Shield has, Legal Shield has a policy against that. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah, you shouldn't, you should never do that, uh, yeah. bottom line. And um, yeah. that, that etiquette somehow or another has escaped a lot of individuals. And I slapped that individual right. today and he got all his pantyhose in a bunch but it'll all be good <laughs> you know the the, the, you know, the etiquette and uh, etiquette in business and etiquette on the web and 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 as a matter of fact etiquette on on um social your media. social media channels like denise was saying people don't want to always say hey here's my special today hey uh oh did i show you my right. special today oh wait here here's another special you, don't you want to buy something like well wait a second here's another special these are they don't want to hear right. that you know they might want to say I want to hear about how you invented that. Oh, well, I invented a new one. It was by accident, and here's how I did it. And mm-hmm. it starts a conversation yeah. versus a, a right. constantly getting hammered sales piece. Um, and then I guess the other way, Denise, is that you can tell from Twitter how many people follow you. And I guess you can from Facebook, for that matter. If you start mm-hmm. losing followers, what, what would your counsel be? What's, what's happening there? Uh, well, you might want to rethink how you're posting your content. Uh, if you, people start dropping off, they, some people may be, you know, you're not going to please everyone. So oh, did, did I tell you about this one, Denise? Did I tell you about this? <laughs> I have another one too. Did I, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. That, I interrupted that you. That kind ahead. of thing will, will <laughs> you know, get people to drop, uh, in, in a, in a heartbeat. But if you're, if you're putting up something that, that adds value to them and you're giving it for free, uh, they're going to hang in there with you. You know, like the, like I said, only 20% of what you post on any of your social media channels should be advertising. The rest should be content that get, that adds value to your potential customers, and they'll start having that trust factor with you and, and feel that they can interact with you and have a relationship because, again, Social media is a social channel, mm-hmm. and you always need to keep that in mind. Uh, uh, you know, as a business, that that comes first, and you need to interact with your customers, um, both positive and negative. You know, posts. Dick, Dick, have you considered telling some success stories on your blog or something like that? If we're talking about behind the scenes uh, success stories at all? Yeah, I've I've considered it. Uh... You know, I've been my blog has been uh, focused on uh, you know identity theft and, mm-hmm. and and scams like that, and and in fact, I mentioned to Denise the other day, I, I probably need to to mix it up a little bit because I think you know it, uh, you get a little bit of variety in the content. So I I was thinking about doing something different this week, and then maybe every other week go identity theft and something. Is success stories, or or what Legal Shield's about, or what what prepaid legal's about, or why you may need, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the service, that type of thing. Yes. You know, one thing that came out again from last night's conversation. You know, I deal a lot with startups, and there's always an attorney with their hand in their back pocket, and they just don't have enough cash flow to cover a lot of the bases. And one thing I didn't realize, like we'd mentioned before, Legal Shield might be a great asset to startups. And having a um, 
maybe even a blog post or two about the, the three best ways to use Legal Shield in your startup that you hadn't thought about might be an interesting right. blog post. That's a great, yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it tells a yeah. story, but it also tells the truth about how you can save money and, and, and help yourself until you can afford that, you know, $10,000 a month attorney uh, or $5,000 yeah. a month uh, uh, retainer fee attorney. Um, God knows yeah. I've spent that kind of money in my businesses. Every time you hit a patent, it's ten grand for every patent and $10,000 a year right. to keep that patent. And if you have more than one patent, you can do the math. It gets to be ugly. Yeah, uh, And that's per country. Oh, you know, there just goes crazy. So, but um, yeah. uh, that's a place where I think some social media behind the scenes story might mm -hmm. kind of sort of cross between the two pieces. It might be valuable to your readers. Yeah. Or, or you might want to consider, um, you know, having someone, a success story, Dick, that somebody that, that you know, took on the Legal Shield. Um, membership and and was able to take care of a legal matter that ended up in their favor and they had a lot of success and were very pleased with the product you know if you if you can find those people that are willing to to come on a, a podcast for example um, sure. a testimonial is really big uh, you know for Huge. others to see yeah. how this works yeah. for you um, and how right. how your product uh, was beneficial to them people are going to be looking at that and wanting to hear about that so for for something like what you offer and and you too peter i mean people want to hear the testimony Testimonials of, of you know how did this work and did this work for you and you know they want they they want to make sure that this isn't some kind of a scam on them sure. you know because sure. there's so many right. of those out there right now. Hey, and by the way, at the end of this website, we're not going to ask you to buy anything. Oh, good. Yeah. I just thought I'd put that out. <laughs> okay. That's right. a, po a podcast is not a webinar. Webinars typically at the very end try to sell you something, and there's nothing wrong with that because yeah. if you can edu if they can educate you about their product and it really is something you want, that's a phenomenal way of, of selling a product. Podcasting, on the other hand, tries to tell a story behind the scenes, so to speak, takeaways, what people can take away, like if they start their, their social media channel. Denise is saying 20% is selling, 80% is conversation. Don't forget that ratio. Right. Do the math and make sure you keep it that way. But one of the unsung things that, and I'm using you as a guinea pig, Dick, and I, I'm not doing this as a shameless plug for Legal Shield because I have no dog in that hunt. Um, but one of the things that surprised me was that Legal Shield had a, a product that, for an existing company with X number of employees, the employees can get Legal Shield at a far reduced rate from a company standpoint. Now, yeah. in this day and age for small business, uh, and for those companies that do have employees, which I think is crazy to have these days, but they do, um, that was a hidden secret for me that, uh, just spend two seconds on that, because I think if anybody listens to this that does have a small business and they're interested in the social media, they also may be interested in some of these hidden things like Legal Shield has. Yeah, well, uh... We call it, you know, it, within Legal Shield, the the group benefits program, and it's it's the fastest growing benefit that's being offered uh, around the country for employees. Any company with five or more employees uh, can uh, offer that as a group benefit to their employees. And the beauty part of it is, that, you know, it's good for their employees. It, it saves the company money. And there's no out-of-pocket expense for them to do it. It's, it's all administrated by Legal Shield and, and myself, uh, and uh, it gives them it gives them access, at, like I said, a reduced rate to uh, to the membership of the Legal Shield program, which is you know gives them unlimited consultations with with attorneys and for contract review, for traffic tickets, for divorce, uh, IRS audits, <laughs> divorce, uh, you know, all sorts of. It, it covers it, pretty much anything except you know, criminal, you know, you know, you rob a bank or murder or stuff like that. You know, that's not part of the program, but, but, you know, pretty much everything else is, is covered by it. So, well, one of the things that we, you know, we have another podcast that we do together for those that don't know about it called senior scams com, And yeah. you had mentioned the other day that legal shield, uh, don't sign any contract and tell what, how, what you said it the most elegant way there, Dick. Well, if someone's asked you to sign a contract, 
you know it's been reviewed by a lawyer and probably written by a lawyer, but not your lawyer. It's by the that's company's the lawyer that's asked you to sign it. Yeah. So have your lawyer, whether it's through Legal Shield or your own personal attorney, make sure they review it before you sign it. Mm -hmm. you know, we could give uh, many of instances of uh, of people that have signed, you know, have had the lawyer review the contract and saved them a lot of money, a lot of uh, heartache. So. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Now. Back, swinging back over for a few more minutes before we run over our hour here. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm back up. I don't know if you, if it's worth uh, be getting back on or not. So no, I think if you just hang like that, we're having better, better right. bandwidth uh, that way. I okay. still got a picture of you. They okay. can now see your smiley face. But uh, uh, right. it would, for the last few minutes, let's just hang this way if you don't mind. Um, not at all. The uh, now, Denise, again, can you kind of summarize? So I've had a website. I have well, like in Dick's case, he he put up a web, and then the and once after he did his mobile site, uh, which is important, then he did his own mobile site, and it looks really good, you know. And then he had to ask the question, um, which social media do I use? Can you kind of put that in a nutshell again? I mean, we know it's not twelve of them, but again, what's a laundry list that you ought to consider? Well, I think. As a basic rule, I would probably definitely recommend that you have a Facebook uh, business page, um, that you have a blogger account. Uh, if you if you set up a, a Gmail account, you you automatically get a Google Plus, uh, which then will sign you on to a blogger uh, account where you can put post your blogs, uh, which are very important. And again, remember that you need to do about 75 of them before people start really noticing you. So that's a lot of writing, I know, but um, the more you keep adding value to your customers, the more they're going to keep following you on those blogs. Um, a YouTube channel, is a business channel, is, is uh, very important. And again, that's a Google product, so you just use your regular sign-on for, for Gmail, and uh, you can set up your own uh, business channel, which I recommend that you post your videos on, and, and then you can have those automatically go to your Facebook channel, your Twitter channel. It won't, I don't think Pinterest is a, a, an offering yet uh, on YouTube, but it may eventually down the road be. Um, but those uh, Twitter... Uh, Yes, I, I would probably start off just see what kind of um, engagement you get with, with Twitter. If you get a lot of people following you, then you must be doing something right, and I would continue doing that. Uh, posting on there, just kind of, it's, it's a lot of trial and error, um, and you have to see which, which things that you post get, get the most responses from your customers. Um, but a picture is, is, or a video is always important to have on every single post that you have because that, that's what's going to draw people in. People don't want to see text alone by itself. They're, they're not going to even bother looking at it. So you want to find photographs that, that um, are relevant to what you're, you're posting about and that are capturing enough to, to uh, you know, entice someone to maybe take a look. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Facebook... Google Plus, YouTube, Pinterest, uh, for some, not all, uh, and Twitter. I think I would start out with those five and Blogger, maybe six. I would start off with those, and, and that's enough. I mean, that, that's a lot. Uh, um, and start with those, and then to see, you know, depending on what your business is, you know, we may recommend some other ones uh, that are coming up, you know, that are becoming popular. Um, but that that takes uh, you know a lot of time and and following uh, analytics to see if you, you know you might want to move in that direction. But I think those are the ones I would first start off with. Do you have any um, counsel on easy content generation? <laughs> easy content generation? Um, I'm not sure I'm understanding. Your question. Uh, <laughs> cell phone, video, cake okay. pan, two rubber bands. You know, the idea that you had mentioned it earlier is our cell phone is a not just a tool for telephonic communication, but we can right. take pictures, uh, voice recordings, 
um, a video that a snippets and one of my clients Rex you know Rex he says Twitter he's kind of a country boy Twitter what do I tweet about? what the hell could I tweet about well that's a real question in their head and I said well any new product you happen to have a, a problem you're having with a product a really fun client you had uh, I mean Dick could certainly tweet about it wow I had a I, Dick yesterday made 30 cold calls. Can you imagine 30 cold calls? I mean, that's incredible. And he, got, and he got two interested individuals out of 30 cold calls. That's newsworthy. I mean, that I'd put up on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. You know, honest yeah. to God, Dick. Yeah. You know, success yeah. is just on the other side of, of rejection. And you better not be an entrepreneur yeah. if, you're, if you're afraid of rejection. And, you know, one of our friends is no. horrifically afraid of rejection. And I got him out yeah. as a journalist not really understanding yeah. that he's actually selling his product, but he thinks he's being a journalist. So, you know, whatever yeah. it takes, you know, whatever it takes. But so easy content, content generation. Uh, talk to us about that a second. What you there, Denise? <laughs> well, um, I, I can use the example of, uh, of the restaurant that I was dealing with. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you have to come up with ideas. Okay, people, yes, they want to see the food. Uh, yes, they want to know, you know, be enticed to come into the restaurant, but what, what other things could, could we do to, to um, give them content that wasn't necessarily about a particular food object, uh, but something for them to, to be interested in the restaurant itself. And then, and as I said, the quick and easiest thing was to use my, my cell phone and start taking pictures of staff, mm-hmm. uh, introducing them, um, you know, maybe giving a little bio about them. Um, maybe taking a picture of the restaurant itself, just, you know, how nice it looks inside. They have a a nice patio on the outside, that kind of thing. Um, That's quick and easy content generation. And your phone is the best thing, and and a lot of people use it. Um, And I think more people in business need to start using their phones. Um, You know, Dick, if you go with a client or maybe go on a cold call, you know, people might be interested in seeing, you know, behind the scenes. Here's Dick. You're walking up to, you know, a place and you're going to do a cold call. You know, I'm going to try and see if I can sell this person on, uh, you know, on Legal Shield and the benefits of it. And, you know, of course, they'd have to be a willing participant. You'd have to ask them in in advance if you're going to have them featured in there. Mm. But, um, you know, it might be interesting. I would be interested in watching that. Um, we have, I think, uh, in that 111 group, uh, you know, we have a life coach uh, that, that sells, you know, a, a dieting um, program. And one of the things that I told him he that I recommended is maybe you could follow somebody um, that would from be day one. Yeah. You know, and maybe do a time lapse thing, and you don't have to see the the thing every single day, but maybe a time lapse right. thing to see, you know, how they lost the weight, and, and then you know maybe interview them, and maybe put some music in the background. It, it doesn't always have to be something with people talking, but would generate some kind of an emotion in your audience out there that may say, "Ooh, you know." I could be that person, you know, mm-hmm. I could lose that weight and, and I could look that good at the end and, you know, maybe I could be featured because a lot of people, you know, like to be uh, featured on, on, you know, media type of, of things. So uh, yeah. those are those are quick and easy content creation things that I can come up with, you know, and, and like I say, the cell phone is the number one thing that's right there, easily accessible, and it can take photographs as well. So you video, have video right. and photographs. And um, audio. And audio. Right. You and can audio. just do audio. Right. You know, you can exactly. always uh, do that too. You know, and then I, I have the one website, Entrepreneurial Goat, as you recall, Denise, where I was being filmed literally in the in negotiations and, and trying to figure out how to run businesses. And I don't know what the right answer is. I mean, I, mean, I know what the right answer is, but how's that going to turn out? You never know. And that kind of voyeuristic, behind the scenes, raw stuff could be very interesting for content and um, mm-hmm. a generation now before we close too um i read and heard everybody talk about hootsuite i have my biases on hootsuite can you give us your your thought on hootsuite well um hootsuite is a, a system that's designed to um you can set up an account to post 
whatever you're going to post about on a particular time or day and it will post to all your social social media channels that you designate uh, but it's the same content for all channels and I don't necessarily recommend that especially if you have the same people following you on all of your channels you'd like to kind of mix it up um, me personally uh, I guess it's if you're really busy Hootsuite is, is is a good thing to have because you don't have to think about it you just do your post and then you know that at five o'clock all your channels are going to get this post on all your social media channels and you can go about your business for someone who's super busy that doesn't want to pay someone to do their social media for them or they don't have the time to do it that might be a good tool to use but personally I, I think that uh, you know people don't want to see if they're following you in all of your channels they don't want to see the same thing on all the channels yeah, yeah. they want to see something different and I think it's it's a good idea to mix it up because Google also uh, reads you know duplicate content um, you know and, and I think you want to avoid that and and try and, and mix up your your post with your social media channels yeah the um, uh, and then we've also are seeing this trend um, social media marketing was a buzzword now is going to social business uh, can you talk a little bit about those two terms and the shift uh, with that no. <laughs> well then let me help you <laughs> you know social media marketing it became very clear I think in the social world that uh, by building a relationship our relationship selling is basically what social media is there's no there's no magic to relationship selling that has been the case for hundreds upon hundreds of years but all of a sudden it seems to be really quite different because it's using a technology and so in social uh, media relationships that you're building and you're talking behind the scenes and oh 20 percent of that is selling uh, became social you know uh, media uh, um, selling known as social media selling and uh, has now become social media business that the social media marketing term is now transitioned to a real entity called social business and that now it is is even more entrenched that you can do business through social media channels no question I think a year ago was a real question. What's all the hype? You're not going to sell anything. It doesn't get me more traffic. It doesn't get me more qualified traffic. It doesn't make any sales. You know, what the heck is a, a like on Facebook? It doesn't put a penny in my pocket. Well, those naysayers, I think, are starting to fall behind now to why do you think they're using the term social business if it wasn't true that, in fact, it worked as a business channel? That was my point. We're seeing a metamorphosis, a change in almost the stature of social media that businesses, if you want to sell, you this is just like another channel. Whether you put your item in the store, whether you put your item in a catalog, whether you put your item on TV, you put your item on the radio, and well, now you put your item on social media. And in some ways, it's even more powerful than any of the other media because peer reviews, you need a dentist, you need somebody to do something, you ask your trusted friends, who do you know? Who, do you know a good dentist? And it's something like 80 or 93% of all the recommend recommendations that are given to somebody, they take it. They mm -hmm. don't look at an ad on TV. They don't look at, at, at a catalog. They, they don't even trust the internet anymore, per se, at a website, but they do trust their peer reviews and I think that's right. where social media comes through in spades is peer reviews uh, you want to close up the podcast with a little dot on peer reviews well definitely um, a peer review weighs more than a paid advertisement that's that's a known fact among you know the, the social media folk um, and but but social media again and I think the businesses are realizing, especially the bigger businesses that are very actively involved in social media, that you know it's not hounding your 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 audience with advertisements. These people want to get to know the people behind the product or the service. They want to be part and, of the family. Want right. To be part of the and, family. You know, uh, I think you know, Peter, you and I have discussed this idea of, of fandom. 
uh, you know, as, as a new term that's mm-hmm. being used, that you get a following of people because you are giving them what they want. They, they want to get to know and interact with a human being behind the name of the product or their service. Um, and that builds a loyalty and a trust and they'll start sharing your stuff if you know uh and with with their with their people uh you know they'll share a post and it'll go to their friends who then you know if they like it then they'll Mm -hmm. share that post and the next thing you know you're reaching out to a larger you know audience of people that will start following you because they like the same thing and most times it's not going to be a paid advertisement it's going to be something like a behind the scenes kind of thing um one of the podcasts that i listened to real quickly was uh something a, a guy was interviewing uh the social media manager for MTV, and I think Jersey Shore is one of the the big shows that they they have on MTV. Um, and people are really into the characters on the show. These are real people, um, and they would post certain things about the characters on there, or the characters themselves would post things, and they would get you know. A, negative and positive following sometimes they would purposely do something negative just to get people to respond right so it's it's kind of interesting to to hear that because you wouldn't think you know they would someone would purposely put something bad on there to get the fandoms to respond but it it worked they were going to kill off a character and uh, everybody loved that character and they went crazy don't kill off my character and uh on that show that that's very good and it, you just think about that loyalty that fandom um, you can't build that, I don't think, almost any other way. I mean, and we saw that with that restaurant where the fans dogpiled the person that was saying something bad. I personally right. have never seen anything like that before. And if that's not a testimonial to the strength of social media, bonding the same like people together with all those peers that are protecting each other and, and they're part of a new tribe, you know. And they, right. they were part of that tribal restaurant, and they dogpiled anybody. And, and, boy, you just don't see that very often. And and that's in a positive way, and I think they'll dogpile people in a negative way as well. If your product is poor, you're going to get right. a lot of followers that are passionately negative about your brand. And that's important. So, Dick, do you have any following questions or closeout questions you want to have? Well, uh, the only thing I have, and I, and I, I think uh, it might be a subject, for a, another podcast, because I know we're running way long, is is you know, Peter, you you do analysis and reviews of, of, of people's websites. Correct. You know, people say I have a I have a website or I'm on social networking, and I was just wondering, if, you know, if they, again from Denise. Uh, oh, that's another good time, idea. Is, do you do do you do an evaluation of uh, of people's social media program and help them improve? Because everybody says I'm on social media. Everybody says, you know, I'm a, I have a website, and you know, we we saw one yesterday. Peter showed me that a website that was unbelievably bad, <laughs> and he'd be better off not having it. He'd be better off not having it, and and I got to think there may be cases like that in social media, that you, know, you that you 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 as part of your your business would do a review of the people's social media program, and you know, analyze what they're sending out. So, but right. again, I know that's that's too long an answer now. But maybe we could do another one just on that. That would be interesting. Yeah, that would be that interesting. Would, you ought to have that product. Can't do that. You ought to yes. have that product to unsolicitedly uh, go after some group that have Facebook, Twitter, and icons on there, and go take a look at their posts and how frequently they post, and are you doing anything, or they're hurting themselves, and send them a message. That's a good idea, Dick. As usual, you have some that's really idea. great ideas, because... Dick. Why didn't you say this three months <laughs> Thank ago, you. Dick? <laughs> Well, I'm just learning myself what I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Dick. I don't know, Dick. You (laughs) surprise the hell out of me. Half the time that we're co-hosting and doing stuff, you surprise the bejesus out of me on your business (laughs) prowlessness, Dick. (laughs) Well, I just listened. Just what I learned this morning from Denise showed me, you know, that I have to re-reevaluate what I'm doing, and I'm thinking to myself, you know. Sometimes it's better to not to have a program than to have a bad one. Right. So you know, you know, like you say, maybe you just you know hit on some people's uh, social networks and send an email and say, listen, you know, you might be better off not having this unless you you know if you want, I can give you some ideas to improve it type of a thing. You well, know, I think like Dick, I, I, Dick, if you sign up for Denise's newsletter, you'd have known this. <laughs> 
I didn't know she had yeah. one. There uh, you go. <laughs> there you go. Getting, right? There Sorry. you go. I've been trying to get her to do a Thank newsletter you. forever. You know, I think that's Sorry. so valuable. I didn't mean to do that. No, I that's knew. Okay. I suckered you into that, uh, Dick. You, I would pay you. Yeah. I'll pay you 20 bucks the next time I see you for that one. That was good. Okay. All uh, right. We all try to help each other's businesses out. And some people yeah. listen and actually do something. Other ones <laughs> procrastinate. <laughs> Yeah. I digress. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, great. Right. Thanks, Denise, for being on the show. And, Dick, uh, thank you so much. And this will be up uh, the next day or so, and I'll send it out to everybody. And we ought to plan on having a recap again, uh, another visit at this in a month or so, huh? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think for me it is very valuable. Yeah. And I think it might be a good idea to uh, share screens and maybe put up some examples of, of social oh, media. Yeah. Ones that yeah. maybe aren't good, oh, good idea. ones that are good, right. uh, so that, that yeah. you know, our audience can see that and uh, kind of, you know, devise a plan or strategy after that. Well, so Dick that, and that, I will go find it. some right. Dick and I will go find some candidate websites to beat up on the same way and then yeah. we'll make sure that they have social right. media and then we can bring them on and and uh, and uh, not beat them up, but obviously get them good constructive criticism so they can change their their evil ways and get on with the 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 right side of the force, you know, so. Yep. Thank all right. you for I having know, me on. I think we know one already. <laughs> I think so too. Well, well that's that's yeah. too easy though, Dick. We need to find something yeah. a little more challenging. Yeah. But all right. right, okay, great. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to everybody later. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Just just oh. take care. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you too. Uh, bye. All right, bye. I was just gonna say. Oh. I was just gonna say I'll volunteer to have Denise analyze my social network and postings and all for the next one. Oh, you'll be the guinea pig, huh? Okay, Dick. Absolutely, You're on. absolutely, and I'm thick skinned. All right. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Talk to you uh, later. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye.